Hey guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and welcome to a brand new segment called the Nothing Box Show. Basically, it's going to be a bit more stripped down, and don't worry, uh, I've got another game box and church box coming out. But basically, my son was born, and I'm hoping that this will be a quicker production type dealio so that I can get more content out to you guys faster. What did that bring you? Back to me. So I hope you guys enjoy the new show. So this episode is going to be about game preservation, which was inspired by Gerard the Completionist's eShop mass purchase, basically of every game and DLC on the Nintendo eShop on the 3DS and the Wii U. And I had this thought to myself, why don't console manufacturers kind of just jump on the emulation bandwagon and make profit from it? Now keep in mind, everything that I'm going to say is with a grain of salt. I am fully aware that these developers are not going to do anything with this this is just a pipe dream. I know it's not going to happen. This is just me saying like, I will give these companies money if they do this. So with Gerard's video specifically, I was wondering like, why are companies always okay with letting the past go? Like the answer's already there. They, they want you to buy no. the new thing. They don't care about the old thing anymore because it doesn't make them as much money or no money at all. However, a lot of games are going to be like lost to the winds of time because these companies don't care about preservation. What's funny though, is that their archives are still most likely sitting somewhere on a database or a server. So so it's like they're just holding on to it and there's nothing we can really do about it except for the p word sailing the high seas you know what i'm talking about and disclaimer this is not a pro piracy video nintendo this is strictly about preserving games and games history The Fitness Gram Pacer Test. So here's my proposal. And don't worry, I'm already aware of sites like GOG and other types of preservation type stuff on PC and even some consoles. This is more of me saying, oh, hey, companies, if you wanted to capitalize on this, people will avoid the P word to start purchasing old stuff again. Number 12, Farmhouse Ghost. Huh? Charge for perfect, basically native emulators. Trust me, I love like all of them. RPCS3, PCSX2. Dolphin, all of those, and like I want them to stick around, and like I'm not trying to invalidate their work because I use them all the time. However, if console manufacturers wanted to just kind of make some money off this, make the actual native emulator because they have the source code, and that way you can charge like let's say like for like the Atari, like maybe like 25 bucks for that emulator, and you can natively run all of the classic games from like Pong to, I don't, E.T., <laughs> don't play that game. And maybe for something more recent, like the PlayStation 4, maybe charge upwards of like $200 for that. And then we can finally play Bloodborne on PC. I really wanna play Bloodborne. So I, that's my general idea for the console side of things. And I know that some games are still kind of get sold today that are on, on storefronts and sometimes old games get put on the Nintendo, the Switch store. Or I know that there's like a bunch of licensing issues and that's why games generally get delisted. However, what if down the road, once a game is kind of like licensed out, maybe if it's not impossible, I'm fully aware that there's more to this than just like, oh, removing a soundtrack and stuff like that. This is more just in concept. Maybe make a website with some games that are license free or like the publisher owns every single asset in that new patched version of the game. So for example, like Forza, that's just recently in my head because I've been playing the new very, very mid expansion. Ugh. I know there's like like music licensing, there's vehicle licensing and stuff like that. And so basically just only using that as an example, why don't they strip out all the licensing related requirements and stuff like that? Like hopefully maybe the cars are still licensed for maybe 10 years and maybe the songs were only for four. We don't know any of that. That's just, that, that's, this is just me speculating and using it as, a, as an example. But there's so many other games that I think that just need like a quick little patch that can kind of be repurchased. And why not put that on a storefront? So that way more console games that are vintage can at least still have a, a like a legal way of enjoying them. So that brings me to why are companies being so forceful on being anti-piracy for things that they're probably never gonna sell ever again? And I get it, like copyright law, I totally understand. You, you made something, you own that, you don't want it being distributed for free. I totally get it. This is more me saying, hey, if you want to continue making money on it, why not make it repurchasable? But all of this boils down to that, like how I said earlier, they want you to buy the new thing. They don't they don't care about the old thing if it doesn't make them any money. I get it from a from a business standpoint. I, I, I understand it. However, it's like why not make that chump change and still offer it legally? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ever admit to sailing the high seas for, for ET. However, if I wanted to buy ET, I would like to buy it. I cannot. And I'm like, I know ET is a terrible example. It's like literally what caused 
basically the video game crash. Instead of punishing us for wanting to play classic games that are not available on other platforms, why not just either let it go or let us buy it? So basically with my pipe dream that I know is not gonna happen, maybe just consider emulation as a profitable business venture. Many people like myself would love to continue supporting these classic games, even if it means purchasing them multiple times or one final time on PC after purchasing the Nintendo GameCube emulator from Nintendo themselves for $100. So that way with Nintendo or PlayStation, if they know that they don't have any interest in reselling a certain game because of licensing or anything like that, maybe if it's just like a quick, quick fix to just remove whatever was licensed that no longer could be sold as the package, just like offer it for 10, 20 bucks, like, like a stripped down version. I don't care if the, if it's missing certain content. I don't care if it's missing. I don't care if Skate 3 is missing the Dr. Pepper billboards, like we'll survive as gamers. And if you really have a list of games that you have zero interest in reselling or fixing or whatnot, why not back away from the distribution sites? Maybe disclose like, hey, without leaking to them that, oh, like this game's gonna come out on Switch now. Maybe Maybe micro takedown stuff like maybe like like the new Me metroid remastered just came out take down metroid without financially punishing them maybe even the, like the day before that'd be kind of neatly like whoa this one just got taken down it's now available to purchase and i think that would be kind of neat but anyways again i know this is a pipe dream i know nothing is going to come of this video i just enjoy classic games and I, I wish that companies would do a better job of preserving them and just again like I love that Gerard video with the eShop stuff like that. I, I don't have $22,000 to do that, nor do I want most of those games. However, I just, I just, I just really hope that things kind of turn around and that we're not seeing some sort of, this sounds really cringe, but like just some sort of library of Alexandria. I hate that I said that, that's so dumb. Anyways, I hope you guys like this new format. Please let me know what topics you want me to cover. Right now, for terminology's sake, I'm doing a lot of evergreen stuff because I don't have the time or the capacity to do like reporting on news. Like, like I know The Last of Us Part 1 port is awful. And now that Steam's refunding it, like it's in another kind of like sort of cyberpunk kind of situation, but like I don't have time to sit down and do that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay hashtag blessed.